guys ever been out on the job and it's been so cold that you're not sure if your hand will even come unstuck from the tool even though you're wearing gloves? Where are you working? The Arctic Circle? And so you ask yourself, how can I make my job site more comfortable for me and my fellow co-workers and or employees? Well, you guys have come to the right place. Today we're here to talk about the job site heaters and the best ways to go about using them. Take it away, Nick. Well, as you all may know, staying warm on the job is one of the most important parts about working during the winter. The longer you're out in the open, all exposed to those elements, the more cold just seeps into your bones. And this affects everything from how productive you are in your day and how happy you are when you get home. Productivity isn't the only thing that's affected. Hypothermia can begin to set in if the body's internal temperature falls below 95 degrees. And we aren't the only things that get affected by the cold. A lot of paints and surface coatings change viscosity, uh, and they can be straight up ruined by prolonged exposure. There are a lot of options when it comes to heating the job site, like propane heaters versus kerosene heaters. Uh, you know, a lot of people just tend to stick with whatever they know or whichever heater has a deal going on at the time, but there's a lot of factors that you should take into account before making the decision, especially if you're heating for an entire crew. And, you know, price is definitely one of them, but you'll want to look more at the price of the fuel rather than the heaters themselves. Gallon for gallon, propane is going to be cheaper than kerosene, but if you look at the cost per BTU... Or British thermal unit. Sure. Kerosene is actually cheaper than propane. There's a little trick you can use to find out which fuel is cheaper in your area. Get the cost per gallon of the fuel, divide that number by the number of BTUs in the fuel itself, and then multiply that number by a thousand, and that number is the cost per BTU. Yep, it, it, it works, just trust me. You know, one of the great things about propane is that its shelf life is indefinite. You won't ever have to worry about your fuel going bad or burning foul, and you won't have to throw any additives into the mix to ensure its longevity. Propane tanks are also much easier to store, and you can leave them outside in the rain or snow without the fear of them rupturing. You may need to add a fresh coat of paint every so often if you plan on keeping a specific tank around for a while to prevent it from rusting, but otherwise you can stick these practically anywhere. I provide the people of this community with propane and propane accessories. Here at good old OPT, we got a few options for propane heaters for the variety of different job site sizes. DeWalt seems to be the top manufacturer we carry for these, so you may want to stock up on their 20 volt batteries. Their smallest size is able to put up to 12,000 BTUs per hour for up to nearly 13 hours of one single one pound tank of propane. It includes three USB charging ports so you'll be able to hook up your phone or other personal accessories while in use. Just make sure they don't rest in front of the heater itself so you know they, they don't get cooked. They will get cooked. Yeah, definitely. Good. DeWalt also has some larger heaters like this guy right here that are capable of heating entire job sites. Their 70,000 BTU per hour joint, for example, is capable of using its forced air technology to pump heat from its split barrel design throughout the entire job site. It also comes with a thermoelectric safety valve that'll kick on as soon as the heater reaches extreme temperatures, uh, so you don't ever have to worry about this overheating or, you know, exploding while it's in use. That's a good point. Propane heaters are easy to clean and maintain. All you have to do is secure your propane tank, make sure the interior of the heater is wiped clean, and you'll be all set. You also want to keep some sort of moisture removal system when using either propane or kerosene heater on the job site because the moisture buildup will cause you mold, will cause you corrosion or rot, and it'll set into the building materials. Propane heaters put off less moisture than kerosene at just under a gallon of moisture for every gallon of fuel burn compared to the kerosene's 1.1 gallons of moisture. It may not seem that big of a difference, but without removal system, that moisture could accumulate throughout the day, potentially causing ice hazards when the heaters are turned off. Yeah, that's true. You know, another great thing about uh, propane heaters and kerosene heaters actually is that they both cause extensive air pollution. Uh, they throw out a lot of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, and sulfur dioxide all at the same time. A uh, ventilation system and or a uh, carbon monoxide detector are absolutely critical if you're using these heaters in enclosed spaces. You know, large concentrations of these gases could cause injury or even death, neither of which are fun to deal with on the job. I mean, oh, imagine okay. that, that was, being the way you go, your work. Yeah, Come on. die from a heater. That's, Come on. Suck. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> now. Kerosene heaters, on the other hand, have a much greater energy potential than propane heaters. Sitting around 135,000 BTUs compared to the propane's 91,333. The containers you'll use to store kerosene are usually much cheaper than tanks of propane. You'll need to store your kerosene tanks in a cool, dry place away from any of the sunlight and never, ever outdoors. A shed will be ideal for kerosene storage, but those without sheds, you may want to look into another storage option or potentially even another fuel option like the propane. That's instance. true. Uh, kerosene heaters also require a little bit more maintenance than propane heaters do. 
Uh, after each and every use, you have to make sure the interior of the heater is cleaned out and that all the excess fuel has been drained away, as well as trimming, cleaning, and occasionally replacing the wick that's used to keep the heater lit. It's not a lot more involved, but I mean, let's be real, even with those few additional steps at the end of the day, that's just too many. A solid kerosene heater is the DeWalt DXH135. It's capable of delivering up to 135,000 BTUs of heat per hour at a temperature range of 25 to 95 degrees. The heating element within the heater cycles on and off throughout the day to maintain the set temperature, and it includes a little storage bin underneath that you could store your wet gloves or other things to heat up and dry. You'll still be giving off moisture with the kerosene heaters as we set up to 1.1 gallons of moisture for every gallon of kerosene burned, as well as the air pollution that gives off, you know, like normal. Uh, so a moisture removal system as well as proper ventilation are still required for use. Thankfully, however, kerosene is significantly less flammable than propane, and it also has an odor and a color that you'll be able to easily identify should there be any leaks during operation. A big question that comes up during conversation about heating the job site is how many heaters or how much heat is needed to properly heat your specific job site. All these facts and recommendations are great, but none of this actually tells you how many heaters you really need on the job site. Is it just one or 20? Well, there is a uh, general formula that you can use of desired temperature change times cubic feet of space times 0.133, and that can be used to determine the proper heating requirements for your specific job sites, but a lot of variables could affect this answer, including current weather patterns, material being used, quality of the job site itself, and the climate zone that you're currently in. Climate zone? What the hell's a climate zone? Yeah, you never heard of the climate zones, dude? No. Uh, well, uh, there are five climate zones that we face here in the United States, and each of them require different levels of BTUs for proper heating. Uh, for a really quick breakdown, zone A, according to the Köppen Geiger model, is listed as tropical, which we can equate to the southeastern portion of the country, you know, like Florida, Georgia, that kind of thing. Uh, for that, you'd usually require about 30 to 40 BTUs per square foot of space. Zone B, the dry climate, would be the southwest, you know, New Mexico, Arizona, uh, which coincidentally also requires between 30 to 40 BTUs per square foot. Uh, zone C is temperate, and that would be like the east into the Midwest, kind of like right where we are in Ohio right now. Uh, we'd need about 40 to 45 BTUs per square foot, as would zone D, which is the continental climate, which would be like the rest of the Midwest into kind of like the more fertile parts of the West. Uh, zone E is the polar climate, which is, for our analogy, would be like the northeastern part of the country, you know, like New England area, maybe like the PNW parts of that. Uh, in some cases, you need up to 60 BTUs per square foot of space to heat properly. Or just go online and use one of those websites with a calculator and enter the information, then Boom, climate zone. Well, I mean, yeah, you, I. So at the end of the day, which heater is truly the best job site heater? For us, the general answer will be DeWalt. But the correct heater for your specific needs will really be up to you and your location. We hope this video was able to help you answer at least some of the questions you have, but feel free to reach out if there's anything more that we can help with. And we'll see you next time. If you have any other questions, leave us a comment or give us a call or send us an email or Write us a letter. Whatever you prefer, just get a hold of us and we'll help you out. If you're looking for even more content from us, subscribe to our channel or check out one of these videos here. Thank you for watching. Now get back to work. You also want to keep some sort of moisture removal. Do you want me to say it? Mm-mm. I got it, Tom. Okay. <laughs>